Hi guys, I'm Mike Sargent, owner of Fluxwork Holding. And I'm his wife, Avonlea, and I'm the office manager. If you've been following Practical Machinists for a while, you may have seen some of our other videos. A while back, we did a video doing a shop tour of our old shop in Tucson, Arizona. And we also did a video on lessons in crowdfunding because we have a lot of experience in that area. So if you haven't seen those videos yet, uh, please check them out. And if you didn't guess from that, we moved. We just came out to Texas, little south of Fort Worth in a town called Crowley. Compared to CNC machining, moving a machine shop is a completely different challenge. Uh, in a lot of ways, I think it's harder. And I have to give credit to the people moving big shops that make it look easy because as just a husband and wife team, uh, it's pretty hard. And we definitely learned a lot of lessons doing it. And we would like to share those lessons with you today in case you find yourself needing to move your own shop. All right, let's get started. Lesson number one, to find a shop, get boots on the ground. That definitely proved to be more difficult than expected. While zoning wasn't really an issue since we were looking out in the country, trying to find something that already had three phase power running out to it was next to impossible. We wound up picking a shop that was not yet built and that unfortunately only had single phase. We'll get more into that later though. So we were lucky to have family near where our new shop was going up because they were able to frequently drive over and see how the build was going. As you can see, it's a fairly large building and we're renting one of the four units in that building. We really like it so far and our neighbors are great. We have a horse across the street. We got a bunch of cows to the left and a bunch more cows to the right. They, they do make for great neighbors. They do. Assume nothing about utilities, lesson number two. Coming from a decent sized city of about a million people, we were used to being able to find broadband internet and three phase power just about anywhere we wanted. However, being in the country of Texas, <laughs> and it is its own country, is a little different. We love being outside of the hustle and bustle of the city, but internet options are scarce. After getting out here, we learned that the only real internet options are wireless. They're slower than we're used to and much more expensive. It isn't a deal breaker or anything, but it is something to keep in mind if you're thinking of moving to the country. Once we found a building that we liked and a location that we liked, we had to figure out how to move our shop, our house, and our CNC machines. Huge shout out to UPAC, lesson number three. UPAC is a moving company that drops off its 27 foot trailer, then picks it up a few days later, delivers it to your new address, and they were a lifesaver. And no, this is not a paid advertisement for UPAC. They just really were that good. We ended up renting two trailers, one for the house and one for the shop. While we only used about 15 feet of the house trailer, we used about 25 feet of the shop trailer, which tells you a little bit about the priorities in our life. We were able to book everything online and the drivers were super nice and it only took about a week for our stuff to arrive in Texas. Something that I cannot stress enough and coming in with lesson number four, Hire movers. We actually found our movers through uhaul.com. Uh, uh, you don't have to actually have a U-Haul truck to use their website to find movers. So we hired a couple young guys with strong backs that did a great job and frankly didn't cost that much to load the truck. They made the process so much easier for us. They, I think we only had them for three to four hours at each location. We wound up hiring the same guys for the house and the shop. And they packed everything up nice and tight, played Tetris with all of our, our equipment and our, our furniture, and probably wound up saving us quite a bit of money on the trailer space. Yeah, because UPAC only charges you by the foot of how much space you use on the trailer. So if you can pack it in tighter, you're going to spend less money. Lesson number five, take pictures of your machines as you prep them. So preparing the machines for moving isn't the most fun thing in the world, but obviously it's very important because you want your machines to arrive safe and sound on the other side. And, you know, there's a lot of wiring and hoses and things that you need to disconnect. And for me, you know, taking things apart is pretty easy. Putting them back together can be more difficult. So I just took pictures of everything as I disassembled um, so that I would be able to put them back together in the same way on the other side. And, I wouldn't have to really consult the manual or electrical schematics or anything like that because I could just make sure everything hooks up the same way it started. So 
It's important, obviously, before you move your machines to drain the oil, coolant, hydraulic fluid. Um, obviously, you need to do something with those fluids because they're, they're not going to go down the road happily. And uh, there is a risk of leaking oil, and you don't want that to happen either. Um, but you need to figure out how to dispose or recycle of those fluids. Um, in Tucson, we used a company called Recycling, and it was it was pretty easy to have them come and pick up all of those fluids, but they are on a schedule and they only come to town so often. So we had to make sure that we timed it correctly so that we wouldn't be ready to leave, but be stuck with, you know, a hundred gallons of recyclable oil that we can't do anything with. And on to lesson number six, choose your riggers wisely. So our basic strategy for finding riggers was to use the absolute best riggers that we could find both in Tucson and in Fort Worth, Texas. And to do that, we basically called up our machine distributors. In our case, uh, Yamazin, who sells both uh, the Brothers Studios and the Takasawa Lades. And we asked them both in Tucson and in Fort Worth who they use to uh, rig most of their machines. And we did get quotes from multiple companies, but we ended up using the companies that they use because we figured they probably care more than anyone about delivering machines safely. Um, so we figured if, it, if these companies are good enough for them, they're probably good enough for us. And really the quotes that we got from other companies were all pretty comparable. So we ended up going with um, who we felt basically had the best references. One thing that we do wish that we had done goes back to taking pictures of everything. We wish that we'd had them take pictures along the way, both when they loaded up the machines, when they had them at their facilities, when they were on the road, and when they got to the facility here in Texas. Um, we did have some minor damage, mostly just to our air compressor, nothing big, but no one wanted to take the blame. So kind of wish we could have known where that needs to be. Yeah, it's, it was kind of unfortunate that, uh, you know, the riggers on both sides and the shipping company and nobody really wants to own up for, for damage that was done. And there's really no way for us to prove where the damage was done. Yeah. We can prove that it was done somewhere. Uh, we have pictures of the machine obviously before, but once it arrived, there's damage and there is insurance that we can go through, but it's kind of a lot of work for a small issue. Once everything else was sent on its way, it was our turn. We had two vehicles, two people, and two Huskies left to get to our new home. It wasn't too bad aside from having to drive separately. We planned it fairly well so that the Huskies had plenty of room in the back of my CRV. The puppers weren't too crazy about all the loud sounds at every gas station, but we stopped frequently and they really did great. And hey, the gas prices weren't quite through the roof yet either. So our first day when we got into the shop, we took a look around and figured out what we might need to do before our stuff started arriving. Um, we realized that there was a good bit of usable space up above the actual office room. So we added some plywood boards up there. So that way we can actually turn it into some usable storage space. I know some of our neighbors have turned it into uh, more office space or lounge space. Um, also, once we got in, we realized might as well paint everything. So painted our space blue. And with that, lesson number seven, check the weather and plan accordingly. Once we were here, it snowed in Texas, which we did not expect. And our machines arrived during a snowstorm. <laughs> On the topic of weather, if I was to do it again, I would probably try to make the move during the spring, summer, or fall, not the winter. Um, you know, we're from Tucson, Arizona, so we're kind of used to the weather being the same all the time. Hot. Hot. <laughs> um, but moving to Texas, you know, it was actually a big snowstorm down here, and it was snowing most of the trip from Arizona to Texas. So that weather probably delayed our move by a good two weeks because instead of taking one to two days for the truck, truck to get across country it actually took them a whole week and and then it took quite a while for the machines to get uh, brought from the riggers in Fort Worth to our actual shop here in uh, Crowley, Texas. 
Lesson number eight, measure twice. So before we ever got to Texas, we made a, a little blueprint of where we would put all of our machines and uh, other equipment in the shop. And we ended up needing to move things around and pretty much completely change that original <laughs> blueprint. It was fine, but because of just a few measurements, we're off by a foot here, a foot there. Um, the original plan didn't really work and we had to move things around. Another thing to consider when you place your CNC machines is um, making sure you have enough space around the machine to uh, get your coolant tanks in and out from behind the machine. Um, also, in the case of our lathe, you know, we needed to be able to load a three foot bar into the spindle. So we had to make sure we had space there as well. Um, Something else to keep in mind when placing your machines is how you're running the electrical to it. And in our case, you know, with the electrical box, we had to keep a solid three feet basically all around the actual box, which is part of why we wound up moving the machines to a totally different location than where we first planned. Lesson number nine, if you see something, say something. So the riggers here in Fort Worth, they did a great job. We're very happy with the job they did. They got the machines down in place safely. But there were some things that I was concerned about as they were moving the machines around. And this applied in Tucson as well when we were loading the machines up on the truck. Um, you know, nobody cares about those machines as much as you do. The riggers, they want to do a good job, but they don't care one-tenth as much about the machine as you do. So if you see anything that you're not comfortable with, um, speak up. And in my case, there were some concerns I had, um, and they were able to address those concerns and at least tell me, you know, what they were doing so that it was okay. While we continue to watch the machines being rigged here, uh, let's get on to lesson number 10, which is prepare for downtime. So we planned on it taking about a month for us to basically make the move uh, of our shop from Tucson to Fort Worth. Now, if you were a larger company and you had multiple employees and you could station some in one location, and station some in the other, you could probably make it a lot more seamless and not have a whole lot of downtime. That just really wasn't an option for us as a husband and wife team. Um, so we planned on a month and it ended up taking a bit longer than that uh, because of the weather delays and, and just other delays. Uh, but, you know, the important thing is that you communicate with your customers if there may be delays. And as long as they're okay with those delays, then, you know, you're, you're good to go. And most people are understanding. We're definitely really lucky. We have amazing customers that have really always had our backs. They wait for us. They are totally understanding, even when it's things that are within our control, especially in this case, you know, we're moving. And then the fact that it took longer, which was a bit outside of our control, everyone has been really wonderful and understanding and we're just, so grateful for the amazing customers that we have. Lesson number 11, level your own machines. Once your machines are placed, um, I think it's really valuable to level them yourself rather than call out the uh, your machine tool distributor to do it for you because one, uh, we all know how expensive <laughs> the these companies are and how much they charge per hour and for travel and all of that stuff. And number two, leveling your machines really isn't that hard. There are some good YouTube videos out there uh, explaining how to do it. And a precision level really isn't that expensive either. So I think it's a really good skill to have. You know, it took me, you know, it probably took me an hour to level the CNC mill and maybe two hours to level the lathe. I'm sure someone with more skills could have done it a lot faster, but now I know how to do it. And I know the machines are level and I can check them, you know, in maybe a month or two months and check them every once in a while after that and feel confident that I can make sure that they stay level over time. Lesson number 12, educate yourself on electricity. So this applies mostly for companies like ours that might have their shop in a location that does not have three-phase power installed. 
Um, so like a lot of people, we installed a rotary phase converter, but things did not go exactly to plan. And we ended up having to do a lot of back and forth with the manufacturer of the phase converter and with our own electricians. And, you know, now I feel like I could easily install the phase converter myself. Um, not that I would, but I could uh, just because of how much I learned in the process. But, uh, you know, when things don't go according to plan on hooking up your electrical, you're going to have people pointing fingers at each other and everybody blaming each other. We basically have the phase converter company trying to blame the electrician, the electrician trying to blame the another company. And it was just a mess. And really at the end, I had to educate myself on what was really going on and uh, be able to say with confidence what was happening so that we could resolve our problems. And the thing that we learned is that rotary phase converters, while they are definitely good for converting single to three phase power, as CNC equipment gets more and more advanced, they need very balanced power and the rotary phase converters just can't hold the tolerances that the CNCs need. And there you have it. That concludes the 12 things that we learned about moving our machine shop to Texas. Yeah, thank you for joining us. Thank you to the Practical Machinists for letting us share this experience. As you can see, we're, we're uh, pretty well settled into our shop. The dogs are getting comfy in their little hidey holes. And we have all of our machines set up and we are making and shipping vices every day now. So if you need a small precision machine vice, please check us out at fluxwordcooling.com. And if you have any questions or comments, please uh, leave them below this video. We'll see you soon. Thanks. Bye.